Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome back to my garden on this blustery day. I thought for this week's video I'd take you on a tour of my pollinator garden. My husband and I put it in last year in May and it is really coming along. It has been such a joy to watch it grow. So the process we went through to create it is this. We took some really long garden hoses, hooked them all together, and mapped out what we thought the shape of the bed should be. Then we went indoors upstairs to get sort of an overhead view of it, made a few little tweaks here and there, and decided, okay, yeah, that's the shape we want. Then we took out the sod in this area, which is never a fun job. We had a little bit of soil brought in to make up the difference since the sod was gone. And then we started planting, which of course is always my favorite part of the job. So what I thought I'd do is highlight a few of my favorite plants and then take you on a video tour of the whole length of the bed so you can see what's been planted and how it's doing. I love these red hot pokers on the left. They are very popular with hummingbirds and all kinds of bees. And so they're an important part of a pollinator garden, but they also just look really cool. You'll notice there's a bee balm behind it that's kind of a deep burgundy color, and that is gorgeous. But I also love Gloriosa daisies, and those are the gold and maroon daisies you're seeing. They are very prolific, so every now and then I have to pull up some volunteers so this bed doesn't become the Gloriosa daisy bed. But they are doing really well, and they're super easy to grow. Here's another one of my favorites. Now you're probably going, oh yeah, that's coneflower, no big deal. Well, this is a native coneflower called Echinacea paradoxa, or Bush's coneflower. And these are going to be very popular with the bees, with butterflies, even the hummingbirds check them out a little bit. And I just love their bright colors. While we're on the subject of coneflowers, how about this one? It's called Purple Spoons, and it has very unusual petals. This is not a native coneflower, but it certainly is gorgeous. And I also love the deep maroon stems. Those are just striking. Last year, I started a lot of butterfly weed or Asclepias tuberosa from seed. And I was tickled to see that it came back up this year. I was thinking it would just be an annual thing that I'd have to replant. But no, it's come up really well. And this is a gorgeous color. No pollinator garden is complete without milkweed, right? And boy, do I want to attract monarch butterflies to this garden. So what you're looking at on the left with the really big leaves is showy milkweed. In the middle is swamp milkweed. And on the right with those little thread-like leaves is whorled milkweed. All of them are doing really well. They've been very popular with tiger swallowtails, but I really, really want to see some monarchs. Now you saw these plants at the beginning of the video, but I really wanted to highlight them. When I was in Chicago a few years ago, I went to the Lurie Garden, and it is a pollinator and wildlife garden. And they had these amazing big plants called purple giant hyssop. And they were absolutely covered with monarch butterflies. I just couldn't get over it. So I decided I wanted to try some here. Now they are not native to the inland northwest where I live, but I thought it was worth trying to see if they would grow here. They are very hardy, they are pretty drought tolerant, and so both of those were my criteria. They are just starting to form blooms at the top, and you can see how tall they are. I'm 5'7", and they're getting pretty big. So we'll see how they do. But I just keep remembering those lovely flowers covered with monarch butterflies. And so it really is my dream to see them on these plants. One other thing I wanted to mention is that this spring I planted a wildflower mix from American Meadows. They have all sorts of seed mixes that are for different areas of the country. And boy, have the plants come up. It's a lovely mix of all kinds of plants. And so it's going to be great fun to see all of the flowers and just the different textures of the foliage. So I'll have to give you an update on that once they're blooming more.
I hope you enjoyed the little tour of our pollinator garden, and I hope it will inspire you to plant your own pollinator garden. Yes, we have a big one, but it doesn't matter what size you plant, the important thing is to help out pollinators and beneficial insects. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you next week. Happy gardening. Mm -hmm.